Hello and welcome back to Behind the Uni, brought to you by the University of Gloucestershire. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome back to the Behind the Uni podcast. My name is Hisham and I'm here with this week's co-host, Jordan. And we're so excited to come to speak to you again. Behind the Uni is brought to you by the University of Gloucestershire. It's the podcast about everything outside of lectures, talking about money problems, mental health, your favourite foods, your favourite spots, and equipping you with all the necessary information to make a good decision about where you go to university. So, welcome back, Jordan. Thank you. <laughs> we've got two amazing students here today. Uh, we've got Leanne and Hi. Harriet. Do you guys introduce yourself, who you are, where you're from, what course you're studying? Let's start with you. With me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Hi, I'm Leanne, and I study drama and performance first year. I'm 18, I'm from Bahrain and Jordan in the Middle East, and I'm really glad to be here. Amazing. <laughs> and Harriet? Yeah, so I'm a first year student in journalism. I'm from Oxford, well, Bista. Um, and yeah. Love Bista, all yeah. the good discounts. <laughs> yeah. That's what everyone says to you. The yeah, it's, it's like I say Oxford, and then they're like, Oxford, I'm like, no, Bista. Oh, Bista Village. Well, yeah. I don't live in the shopping centre today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, I actually live in the, like, the, the actual the, town the basement next to of it. the Louis Vuitton. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stick some, uh, some water to get ready. So yeah, we're really here to talk about kind of your journey as a, st a student. Uh, Jordan's a second year student. I'm a graduate doing a master's. So I'm like a veteran at this point. Uh, in your first year, so you're kind of like starting your university journey. You're discovering who you are and what you like about life and what you don't like about student life. So we'll dive straight in. Leanne, you're an international student. Yeah. All the way from Bahrain and Jordan. I love it. Middle East represent. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and like how was your, did you always knew that you wanted to come and study abroad? Yes, definitely. I've always known that I was going to leave Bahrain or the Middle East in general, but I always thought I was going to go to America. Yeah. It was very, very last minute very that good. I decided to come, <laughs> <laughs> to come to the UK. Yeah. My brother studied in Cardiff University and he really suggested that England is better, it's good transportation, people are around you, you have people, and it's also, price-wise, it's cheaper. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's really, really important. I think, like, as an international student, price is a major factor of where you go, your decision-making, but it's really interesting that your brother, like, also came to the UK, yeah. and he suggested that. And yeah, I definitely do agree with the, like, the transport links and how if you're in England, you can easily travel in Europe. You can go yeah. to London really quickly, go, you can go to Oxford and Bista Village and <laughs> shop really quickly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's so good. And we'll definitely d dive about the trials and tribulations uh, of being an international student. What about you? How, where, how is your journey coming to uni? Yeah, well, uh, like an, uh, it's an hour drive, hour and 30 like at push. So it's really easy to get to. And it's all like back roads. So it's, you know, if you want to get to a really chill drive. But again, because not having car in uni, yeah. my travel then goes to three hours on the bus or two hours and a half. Yeah. But it's not bad. Again, it's I can get a bus straight from here to Oxford, Oxford to Bicester. So nice. like, it's really easy, it's really simple. Get on the train, easy to get back. Love that. And how are you finding your course so far? Yeah, I love my course. It's like hands on and you have, it, there's so much support. Yeah. That's the main thing that I love with my course because back in sixth form, like back when I had school, it was like, oh, I need help. They're like, okay. Cool. Yeah, That's and we'll fun. definitely dive into that <laughs> yeah. all later. Um, but yeah, we're so excited to have you here because I know, like, being a first year student, it's, I guess, scary. Like, starting uni is scary. <laughs> you're not scared, are you, anymore? You're no, like, no I'm, anymore. You're like, I'm just now stressed, to be <laughs> yeah. honest. Yeah, um, scared than stressed. Do you have any questions for, for them before we kind of start into, like, the journey of coming here? Can I'm you? so curious why you picked Gloucestershire in particular. Ooh, okay. Out of everywhere you could possibly pick. <laughs> <That's not true. laughs> um, okay, so. While applying, I was really looking for universities. Gloucestershire was not in my top five for UCAS. And I remember going to my drama teacher and telling her my suggestions. And she told me to switch out one of the unis for Gloucestershire because she said her daughter went there and it was really good. So I did. I didn't expect to actually end up here, but I did. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then, I mean, I, some, some of our viewers know, but I'm, like, I'm Egyptian. I lived in the UK for all my life. So like, I come from the Middle East and yeah. I have the same background. But how have you found the transition so far? I don't know, not too bad. The thing is, <laughs> Bahrain is not, I wouldn't say whitewashed, but it is. <laughs> Westernized. It's Gulf countries are a bit westernized. Compared, yeah, so it wasn't too bad, especially my English is better than my Arabic. I speak Arabic, guys, just saying my mom's <laughs> watching, you know, <laughs> I do. But uh, my English is a bit better in things. But I think the only thing that's a bit annoying, I guess, is the word, is the cultural differences. There is, 
you can't, I don't find that many Arabs here. So there, we don't have that same exact belief system and just that very collectivist culture mindset. Yeah. Right, and we'll definitely dive into that. How is your culture differences between Oxford and here? <laughs> <laughs> I always say it's like the same. To me, yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> Gloucester's like Banbury and then like Cheltenham is like a mixture of Oxford and Bicester. It's so, so it's funny like that you just mentioned Banbury because we're definitely from <laughs> like we the same area. Because I went to school in Helion Thames. Yes. So yeah. very much the same area. But yeah, we'll definitely yeah. talk about that. Do you have anything else you want to talk before we jump in? No, go ahead. No? Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is really focused for all uh, young students who are thinking about studying university or maybe even thought, have the sprout of an idea of going to uni. So let's kind of like go back to when you were like 15, 16. Did you always want to go to university? Did you know that like higher education was your route? You're shaking your head very <laughs> adamantly. You're nodding very adamantly. <laughs> Harry, let's start with you. Why not? Or why did you not think yeah, that you wanted like, to go to uni? The university to me was like, just a big thing. I was like, why do I want to move away from my family? Why do I want to move? Like, why do I want to carry on with school? Mm -hmm. And like, I was like, oh, I just want to get a job. I just want to get into things. And uni for me was never like, like it wasn't on my mood board. It was never like, I never really looked at uni and was like, yes, exactly what I want to do when I'm like, when I get like, older after sick form. Did you have other people in your life that like went to university and maybe didn't have a good experience so that you felt like, you just was yeah. that like you influencing your opinion or well, my, my cousin went and it wasn't for her so I was like okay that's one person my sister went my other cousin went they both graduated so I was like okay mixed opinions but personally for me it was more of a mental health thing okay I had very bad anxiety so like going into school itself was a struggle let alone on my own in a different area different school you know everything on my own was like no I'm, I can't do it I physically can't yeah. and then like you know, things happen as I changed schools and, you know, got myself there first. And then I thought, okay, maybe I can look at uni now. So. Love that. Yeah. And then do you feel like you, not a better person for it, because I'm sure you're, you're a great person <laughs> at all, but do you feel like you've grown in confidence? Oh, a whole different person. <laughs> I was that, like, person in class that literally couldn't sit in their seat long enough. They had to get out to now this. <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, even just sitting in, front in the of big those lights and cameras. Yeah. L love that for exactly. You. And like in the big lecture halls, like when I first moved here, I said to my lecturers, I was like, I don't think I can do this. By the way, I feel like I'm going to have to sit this oh. one out. And then they were like, No, no, we we got you. Like honestly, we can do this. We can do that. And I was like, Sure. And then yeah, I went for my first one. And after that, I texted my mum and was like, Oh, I did it. I had my first oh. lecture. I'd done it. I s sat there the whole time. And yeah, just carried on going. You should be proud. Definitely should yeah, be proud. Yeah, very. You've yeah. got like so amazing. So many years ahead of you, I guess, yeah. such a good time. <laughs> How about you? You were nodding. You were like, yeah. <laughs> Here's the thing. I didn't realize it wasn't a big thing here to not go to university. And yeah. Like in the Middle East, you grow up and you're like, yeah, we're going straight to uni after this, whether it's in the Middle East or you're going out the country, especially out the country. And then I come here and people are like, yeah, no, majority of us don't, don't go to uni. Or, I've, oh, yeah, like I wasn't going to come to uni university. So that was a culture shock in itself. But uh, yeah, I definitely always knew I was going to come to university. And yeah, here yeah. I am now. Because you're studying drama and performance. So I guess, did you, have you ever had the thought about like, oh, I might be better off maybe just going and getting like experience and auditioning from a young age and like seeking that route? Or are, are you more all about kind of like learning more, getting your like, I guess, skills up more so you're ready for like that process? Kind was that your th thinking behind yeah. it? It was kind of both in a way. First of all, there isn't much of an industry, at least in Bahrain, for acting. So I knew I was going to leave anyways. And then university was the pathway for that. I got a lot of comments about, you know, you should take a different degree like business and then have acting Perfect. as a yeah, <laughs> acting as a hobby. And I never agreed with that. So I always wanted to do something I really love and passionate about. And l going out and Actually, I can do both. That's the thing. Now that I'm outside of the country, I can audition for things, but I'm also in university and learning more and upgrading my skills. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> yeah, like, sorry, it's sports. Like, as well, like, when you said about the ho hobby thing, like, mm -hmm. when I was in school, my teachers were like, what do you want to do? I was like, radio. They're like, uh, you can't do that. That's not a real thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I was always That's told. That's so rude. Yeah, my, <laughs> my teachers, like, I remember, I'm not going to name, because if they see. <laughs> yeah. But no, she was like to me, yeah, like, you, you can't make it in that industry. Like, that's not possible that's not a career like you can do that mm. as like a side job and I was like mm, no, no I'm gonna go for this yeah good, good so yeah because she was like oh just just do like teaching or and I was like no <laughs> I can I, that can be my hobby I can go do some helping <laughs> out you know no, so, yeah. so, I mean that's really really great to hear that like you've overcome that but it's also really sad to hear that like teachers yeah like some teachers say to people that like it 
a job in the creative industry is not mm. a viable option, it's a hobby. I don't think being a radio presenter is a hobby. Like working 12 <laughs> hour days, believe me, I've done it. Like <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard work. Yeah. Mm. And being an actor is a hard work. You can literally put yourself out there in really vulnerable situations. So yeah, every job is valid. Yeah. <laughs> You know? Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't tell her her job's bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I never said that to her. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, the courses that you're doing now, did you always want to do them or have things changed? How did you get, get to that decision? Do you want to first? Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I've always known since I was a kid that I wanted to do acting and I wanted to be an actress in the future. So I knew that, I, I, I always told my parents since I was younger, I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to study acting in uni. And obviously, you know, kids always want to do something random, like dancing, or they want to be a An singer. Astronaut. Yeah, astronaut. <laughs> so they, they thought it was this, that concept. Up until I think, I was very stuck with it. Until year seven, they started to realize a bit that, yeah, I wanted to do that. And I think the moment my parents kind of got convinced that I was going to do it is when my dad and my mom watched my performance in year 12 in A11. They're like, wait, she's kind of good. <laughs> wait, <laughs> you did that. You did that. <laughs> I, think I made my dad cry. I was like, nah, that, <laughs> I will be doing Where this in the future. Where is my Oscar right now? <laughs> Where is the Oscar? So, uh, yeah, I've always known I wanted to do it. And I'm, I can't believe I'm actually here doing it. That's another shock on its own, yeah. Because yeah, I guess from like being an international student, the process is so long. Yeah. Yeah. But well, we'll definitely go into application process and from both <laughs> sides. But yeah, following from Jordan's question, yeah. why did you why the course? Yeah. Well, I never knew what I wanted to do. I went from like swimming. I was like, yeah, I'm going to become an Olympic swimmer when I'm older. Then I was like, yeah, I'm going to go into teaching. I was like, yeah, primary school teaching. I did placement. I went, yeah, I don't mind doing this as a like a like TA but I couldn't do it as a job it, for me it was not my thing that's interesting so but you did a placement when you were what in yeah. doing A levels or like yeah A levels yeah because part of my course I had to so I was like yeah actually I want to do this and I literally walked to the form I was like yep told my form tutor I was like yep I'm going to be a teacher I'm going to do this and then I spoke to my media teacher and he was like what about broadcast journalism because you've always like liked radio because mm. like uh, I, when I used to work I ran into a, a Radio 1 Extra person I served him and I was like what do you do? And he like, ex explained it and I was like, do you know what, actually, yeah, I want to do what you do. And then I was, yeah, my uh, media teacher, he was like, yeah, broadcast journalism. And I was like, yeah, that's it. And then that was right end of year 13, really last minute. Oh, wow, okay. So like, I think cause, as well, because being told it's not really a job, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll it leave it. it. Yeah. And then again, another teacher be like, yeah, I did that and I'm here. And I was like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> I'm signing up right now. That's and so yeah. cool. So like you, you were end of year 13, so technically did you miss like the original deadline? No, I, I, I got the deadline literally like because I signed up for it. I picked like not like, you know, like end or before you need to pick. Yeah. So I, I went to look at loads of unis really late and I toured loads late and I was like, okay, no, I love the media department. And I spoke to all the, like, the course leaders and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely this putting right this. Right. And then it was like a quick do it after like visiting the ones I wanted to see. So yeah, Love again, that. like that's the thing that you, it, you don't have to rush to pick 100%. your. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we've said this on your guys' first like episode a few episodes ago. We see this thing in the UK where college lecturers or sixth forms like deadline. You have deadline. Mm -hmm. Your life will end if you're <laughs> not put in your application. <laughs> Just not true. No. Um, and you, there's so many other ways that you can do it. So you found out about Gloucestershire through one of your teachers, or you spoke yeah. about it, and then and you kind of thought about the UK because of your brother. Mm -hmm. How, I want to know, how did you guys start researching universities? Yeah, Is I went straight into like TikTok, YouTube, because I'm a massive like stress head. As soon as I need to find something, I'm like <laughs> YouTube it. I'm like trying to find someone reviewing their room. Yeah. Like, and then I found two, like, I found the podcast. And I found videos that you like, ever, like the uni posted. Of, this like, podcast. I don't know if it was this one or a different one. Yeah. But there was like loads I watched and there was, um, it's on their Instagram now about this one girl explaining like she didn't want to come into uni and then it was like home to her. Yeah, and it's this like, podcast. Yeah, it is, oh yeah. Oh my God, that thing, I, like, I watched it. Put and that like, in writing, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watched it because I, like, I was like searching it up and I was like, I need to know what this uni is like. And I was just like watching the podcast. And obviously now, you know, when you're like, watching there, you don't clock until like, like just now, I'm like, oh, it is. Yeah. But no, I watched it and um, it was like one girl saying she, did, she went to a different uni, came here and it was completely new. And I was like, okay, that's a really good sign. Yeah. And yeah, I just did loads of stuff like that and I went all on Google. I was like, 
imaging. I screenshot all the rooms and I was like planning it all out. And I was like, okay. You sound like me. That's what I did. Yeah. That's what otherwise, I, did. I wanted to know if it was like perfect. And obviously, yeah, it was. Love that. So, so that was like initial stages. We'll mm -hmm. go to the next step in a bit. Yeah. What about you, Claire? What, what research did you do? Did you go to Google and? I actually did. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, I wanted to do an acting course. Thing is, majority of the acting courses are theater based acting courses. I really want to move into television. So first thing I searched was, you know, acting degree television. And I would look for the courses in the UK that had that television aspect in it. Mm -hmm. And I found quite a few. And from that, I was kind of pinpointing the ones that I really like. Um, also, the areas were really important, I guess. I didn't want somewhere too busy, but I didn't want somewhere too quiet. Coming from a country that's it's really tiny. For people who don't know, Bahrain is really, really small. It's like an hour drive from the top to the bottom of the country. So I, I wanted this lifestyle that was kind of similar to that. So all my research process had to be about like location and also, yeah. So after that, also another thing I did was on the UCAS website, which I realized halfway through my research that I could just write the course and then find a bunch of universities that yeah. has that course. So I was kind of pinpointing from there as well. Love and that. then. Yeah, I got a list of unis. Love that. I did, I did that as well. UCAS was so good yeah, for it. Yeah, it was like really helpful. Journalism or anything, like keywords, and then they give you like a hundred and something options or yeah. like, yeah, it was really good. Definitely. Yeah. Love that. I want to talk about visiting the, the campus, but I want to give Jordan the chance to ask. I see she's got a lovely list of questions. I do. <laughs> so, go ahead. My next one was about open days anyway. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, yeah. Right, segue. I know. <laughs> go ahead. Um, I was going to ask what the like maybe the deciding factor of when you came to an open day here, if you did come to an open day. I didn't. Oh, OK. I, I did come to the country. <laughs> yeah. I, just thought, like, I didn't either come to an open day here. <laughs> yeah. um, it's for you then. Yeah. When you came here for an open day, what was the deciding factor? Yeah, so day? on the open day, for me, it was my lecturer, and I've said this to him so many times, what really it got it for me is like we had an interview with him. We had all the, like, the talks. He asked everyone in the class like where they're from. And when we walked out here, remembered every single person's like location. Who's that? Paul. Paul. 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Absolute king. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, they care because for me, a lot of the open days I went to, they were like, what grades do you get? What can you do? What can't you do? Or have you started this? Have you started that? And they didn't care who I was. Like I, most of them were like, don't know your name, don't know yeah. where you came from, nothing. They just cared that if I had the grace to get in and like, you know, fill up their like good grade part of it. And I'm like. I came here and they were like, right, we want to know about you yeah. to know if you're right for here. And I was like, okay, <laughs> cool, that's good. And then like the way they showed you around was just so, to me, obviously like being nervous, I was, you know, everyone's nervous when you open to an open day, but for them to be like, we've got Percy pigs on the tables, <laughs> guys, come on, honestly, <laughs> all of it. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is nice. Yeah. <laughs> They're really nice people. But yeah, that's my main thing. What was thing. the immediate feeling of like when you, I guess, came to campus? It was just like, the, I think the modern, like how modern this campus is. Yeah. It really, I was like, okay, right, this is, this is really nice. And it's just the open plan, it's so, it's just warm, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, just like, it is like home. If you, when you walk in, you don't feel like, oh, it's really intimidating. You've got all these buildings, all this like microphones, all this to use. It's kind of like, oh, that's fine. They'll teach us as we go along. So yeah, it was so really nice. comfortable? Yeah, 100%. Love that. I just love that every single journalism student that's ever been on this podcast mentions Paul's yeah. name. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like we should probably like do like some sort of, I don't know, social media team. We should do some sort of like a roundup of every single time Paul Wilches is mentioned. <laughs> yeah. But that's so important. Like I think for me, it was literally the same thing. I, I, came, I lived in Reading mm -hmm. and I was going to college in Helion Thames. Yeah. I was so close to London and I was always in London. And I was like, I'm going to go to uni in London. Mm. Had the exact same experience. I went yeah. to an open day at a specific university in North London, won't mention that name. <laughs> um, and I just felt like I was like there, I felt like an inconvenience to them for being there. Like people were not nice to me, people were not nice to my family. I just felt like I was a number in that room for them. And they like asked us to like give in their emails so they can send us more information. And I was like, no, I don't want to hear from you mm. actually. Then mm. I came here <laughs> mm. and it, it was Paul and Erica who yeah. are lecturers on the course, who literally said to me, hey, what's your name? Where are you from? And I was like, oh, my name is Isham. They're like, oh, where's that name from? And we spoke about like my background and why I'm interested in like world journalism, all that stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, this is so, no one's actually been that interested in what I am as a young person interested in, if that makes sense. Because yeah. again, in school, I don't know if you guys ever had the experience. In school, people want to get, want you to do good in grades, yeah. but they never really speak about what after that. Mm, yeah. So I literally felt, I, I think I had the exact same experience of like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. I actually can see myself yeah. here. This feels like, like home. 
Um, and Leanne, obviously, you didn't come to an open day. Yeah. What was your kind of expectation before you arrived here? It was, I don't know, it was kind of weird. I didn't think too heavily of it. I mean, I did definitely follow all the social medias and I was just trying to understand because I knew there was multiple campuses. I was trying to get a feel for where my campus would be, how far it would be from the other places, yeah. if I'm going to be around, which I am, which is so cool. But um, it was a bit odd because I would have loved to, that was another thing, I would have loved to talk to my lecturers, but I didn't get an opportunity because it was an online audition, but it was a submission one rather than a face-to-face -face one. Yeah. And I didn't come to open days, but I thankfully the t oh the TikTok saved my life. <laughs> that was the thing. There was there was videos of the open days of just social lives and things, and that was also that was a good deciding factor because I felt like I was kind of there in a way. So you're like you're on TikTok scrolling. Yeah, and I was like, wait, because this place is really nice, and I got a live like live footage of being there, kind of. Yeah. Love that. I really hope that the social media team in that gallery is like taking <laughs> notes <laughs> for our box. Um, but like this is what, what this is why I love doing this podcast so much is because being a student mm. is an investment, mm, especially definitely. for an international student. Yes, <laughs> it's expensive, mm -hmm. and you're away from home, you're away from your family, you're away from your culture. You want to get a good idea of what it's like. So this is why we do this podcast. There's so many other episodes. Go and explore them. But yeah, it gives you a good idea of what it's like to be here and what the trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. um, what a great question. I love that. Do you have any more before we move on? Um, I'll ask them in a bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm really intrigued. Obviously, you mentioned like mental health and like being a, um, just being a young person, mm -hmm. like going to new experiences is always hard. What your guys' anxiety was mostly like surrounded about and how do you feel like you've overcome the anxiety? Do you still have anxiety about being here? Yeah, let's walk through that. Let's yeah. start with Harriet. Well, yeah, my main thing was just one alone because, like, you know, if you have a doctor's appointment, it's like, oh, mum, do you want to come with me? It's like, no, on your own this time. And it's just, like, little stuff like that, like going into your lecture on your own and, like, you know, if you go from, like, personally, my, like, the lecture halls weren't as big as what they are now. Like, I go in with two other courses and, like, for me, that was terrifying. I was like, all them people, if I had to put my hand up, no, can't do it. And then, like, that was my main thing. It was just whole unknown was the main thing of like yeah. obviously it is a big thing you go you're completely on your own and then but then you realize you're not that is the main thing that really like tackled it, it you're was, all in the same boat yeah and, like everyone said that to you like they were like oh everyone's in the same position and now it's easier said than done like, yeah exactly like, yeah so i don't yeah. understand and i sat there and i was like yeah of course yeah yeah and i was like oh no mm -hmm. and then yeah like i, I just started to do things like when I went to the lecture halls met people and then in my class everyone was just like I'm also I'm really nervous for this I don't want to do this and then we all kind of were like no you know what we can all do this we got this together I and then it that. just yeah just like that really like proper team gloss spirit I love it, that. honestly yeah because obviously like with my course we've got media and comms and journalism mixed so like you meet a lot of new people and they made us go on this trip and everyone was a bit like, oh, don't want to do this. Wait, you guys were the first people? Yeah, the first okay. year to do the camping thing. <laughs> okay, well, definitely, let's yeah. go into that. Because I think this is crazy, but it's such a cool idea. <laughs> we'll definitely go into that. But yeah, so you do feel like yeah. just doing it yeah. helped? Yeah, 100%. Like, just going in there and thinking to yourself, like, as well with the uni as well, this might sound like a bit silly, but like for me, it was like, it's uni, I get to choose. If I don't feel comfortable, I can just go out, have a little break. Whereas in school, it was like, oh, can I go? And they're like, no, you can't. And mm -hmm. you're like, OK, I'm trapped now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And here, funny. it's like, oh, oh, need to go do this two seconds. They're like, it's fine. We've got your notes here. I'm like, oh, great. Obviously, they're not literally writing it for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but like your friend next to you, if you walk out for a couple of seconds, they're like, right, quickly. I'm like, yep, got this, keep going. You it's know. like a different education culture. Yeah, it just feels a lot more free. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're not tied down. We have to sit in that chair for hours. Like, you know, we chose to be here. This is the course I wanted to do. It's the course I love. So it's your passion. Yeah. I love that. How about you, Leon? How is your anxiety of, like, moving country, leaving... I don't, I don't want to use the phrase leaving family behind, because you didn't leave family behind. Like, <laughs> took a little break from them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how was that? Um, here's the thing. If you ask anybody, they'll say, oh, yeah, Leon's independent. And I would say if I'm forced to be in a situation where I'm independent, I will be. But the idea of moving countries and being that independent, that was, that was a shock to me. It was a bit, I was anxious about leaving the country. My dad was coming with me for two, three days. He stayed with me. But it was the idea that I'm going to have to travel back home alone. I'm going to have to take my own plane. And I have to do transit alone and everything. That 
that was really scary. Um, and also just the con laundry. Laundry was also another <laughs> thing that was in my back of my mind. I've never done my own laundry. My mom would do it or my maid would do it. And then I come to this country, I'm calling my mom, like, how do, how do I wash <laughs> my clothes? And I think it was all of these things that they seem very easy in their day-to-day -day life activities, but then actually sitting and doing it alone, it, it was like, it was an anxiety moment for a minute. But then once I did it, I was like, wait, I can do anything. <laughs> and I, I think since then, I've, that's another thing. The independency, wherever you come from, whether you're international or not, like the transport, the journey alone, walking to uni, I think people change a lot through that. Like, I feel really, really independent. Like, I can do any of it now. Yeah. Love that. So, cool. so you can do laundry. You're not mixing, like, I can do laundry. <laughs> you're not mixing, like, colors and whites. Love I that. I learned. Yeah, love that. <laughs> it's like, I've dyed everything pink. And here we are. No, but that's really good. But, like, as an international student, I'm really keen to, understand, like, know more about... Mm. It's really different because I, I know what it's like, mm. like in the Middle East, like the way that universities operate in the Middle yeah. East is so different to here. You live in halls, how, and we'll get to that in a sec, but like, were you worried about like meeting new people and like what would that be like? How do you feel like you've overcome that? Okay, so I, that's the thing. I met some people on my course before, but I never met anybody who lived in my accommodation, or specifically my flat. And online, I think, you say online? Yeah, yeah. online. And then, so I was a bit nervous who I was going to be with because I'm living with a bunch of people I never met. I think uh, two days before I moved to the country, uh, my friend found somebody who lived in my flat, which I think was a crazy coincidence. How? I just, <laughs> Your I'm, friend is I, I really <laughs> don't know. <And> <laughs> so I managed to talk to her. Her name is Phoebe. Hi, Phoebe. And she was, Phoebe. She was, yeah, shout out, Phoebe. She was really sweet. And... I think that made me a bit more calm about meeting people. And then I moved in on the first day, and I was with my dad just like sorting out things. She comes into the kitchen, we were talking. Then another one of my flatmates, Chloe, hi Chloe, <laughs> she comes in as well. And I think from that moment, like I already felt a bond. It was really nice and they were very sweet. And again, the same thing you were talking about, we're all in this together. Yeah. So yeah, it was very, it was nice. I love that. Yeah. And then being a, like um, a first year student, or some, how other people call it being a fresher, we don't use that term here. No. It's toxic. We're all about it. Being a first year student, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you like there. You all go through so many different, there's all like so many different experiences at the same time. Yeah. So I want to talk about your camping trip, and we'll <laughs> talk about halls. Journalism, the journalism calls this year decided that it would be a really good idea, and it was, I think it was fantastic, it was right? A, yeah. To what take that? all the students on a camping trip in the Forest of Dean, which is a beautiful area, of the, mm. which is a beautiful part of the world. Yeah. And on paper, I remember like hearing that as like a graduate, and I was like, that sounds like chaos. <laughs> like it was like, because ex explain it to us, but it was like 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. well, it's, it literally was. When we saw it, everyone was like, oh, are you kidding me? We, like, we don't know these people. It's October. We've literally not even been here for a month yet. Um, and on the thing, it's basically said like, there was activities which would make it fun, like whoever made the best TikTok while being there, who made the best like story. Just like it was really like a jumping. Residential in. Yeah. Comment. And then um, it was like we all got to give, give, given tasks of like mix of people. Let me talk to get to know everyone. Obviously, the one thing that put everyone off, off even was um, like you got to uh, triple bunk beds, and everyone was like, hmm, no, <laughs> didn't sign up for this part. We're not <laughs> uh, not this close yet. <laughs> and um, no, but yeah, it was really good because by the end of it, we all knew each other by like obviously we'd just been in there. We were in class every single day, but everyone was kind of like in their little mini groups they'd formed. And then by having that, I mix everyone up, but like in a good way. Obviously, no one really wants to be mixed up in the first like couple weeks of yeah. being there. Like an icebreaker of like, tell yeah. us who you are and what's it's your bucket list. Yeah, it literally was that. And then it's like, but it's again like, you know, when you're cooking with people you don't know, it's like really getting to know how people are. Like, are they bossy? Are they like, are they clean? Are they not? <laughs> and everyone was like, okay, I got like the this. the thought of someone being like, you cut the onions, you yeah. do the peppers. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> everyone was like, oh no. Cause my friend was like, oh, I don't like if someone's gonna tell me what to do. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> And then, yeah, it was just, it was really good. I mean, I have a picture on my phone of all of us like this, like, not wanting to <laughs> do it. the first day. <laughs> yeah, like, and, well, as soon as we got there, we're all in the room with, like, triple bunk beds behind us. And then we're like, I was like, guys, do a miserable face. By the end of it, we were like, that is so silly of us. We were all, like, expecting it to be really bad. Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. like, when, like, oh, in a forest, everyone's like, oh, forest, really? But no, everyone loved it. By the end of it, we were like, yeah. And we literally went to our lecture after it as well. So, yeah. Because it it it, I think it was such a good idea because it is, we spoke about, the, me and Jordan spoke about this in the previous episode, we said that like sometimes the best thing about university is that you get out of it you, what you put into it. And yeah. sometimes being thrown in the deep end of like, 
hi, you're new students, you're going to be together for three years, you're going to go and camp for 24 hours. Yeah. And it does sound like we're going to be like, kumbaya, my lord, we're on yeah. the fire. <laughs> was it like that? Did you guys we, like... We literally joked about that. Everyone was like, so who's bringing the guitar? Who's bringing the marshmallows? Who's going to sing, who's gonna sing what the wall? Yeah, literally <laughs> everyone was sat there like joking about it. We're like, oh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm all sharing the sleeping bag, guys. Everyone get in. And then like we got there and they were like, it's really good though, they, they start playing games. It, it literally was, all of us around this fire, yeah. we were playing games, but it was so funny because no one understood the rules. One lecturer <laughs> knew the rules and everyone was like, is it me? Yeah. What? <laughs> Am I dumb? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone was like, I don't know what we're playing, couldn't even tell the name of it. But, That's so fun. But having that, it was just funny. And then one of the guys um, brought his camera. So like all the cute little like um, pictures, like hand up photos as well. It was so cute, honestly, yeah. That's so wholesome. Nice. Yeah. So that's one of the things that you apparently if you get to study journalism, or maybe every course should do this. Yeah. yeah, honestly. You'll get, you'll get to, but I think that's the best part of being a student is like all those memories that you'll make. Like, think about maybe like six, maybe not six months. I don't, can't do maths for a second. <laughs> Summer last year, before you started uni. Imagine like the Harriet back then, hearing about that. Oh, no, she would have been like, I'm withdrawing right now. I'm not doing it. All right, maybe we shouldn't yeah. tell young students how yeah. to come here. <laughs> well, that's so good. I'm really glad they had a good time. And I, no, I hope yeah. you guys are all still friends. Oh yeah, all of us, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, the whole the whole class is like, like, like Paul always says, they're like, oh, my classes are always like either everyone's together or they're like chalk and cheese. Everyone's yeah. just, you know, and our class is like, we, everyone can speak to each other, everyone's together. You know, every, like obviously everyone has their moments and whatever, but like we're human, do you know what I mean? Like mm, so, I love that. but yeah. It's just the, the real part of life. Yeah. While I look at my, get my questions up, do you want to ask a question? Oh you yeah. It's going back a bit, but when you were applying, who did you get to help you? Because I did mine when I was 23, so I wasn't in school or anything. How was that kind of process of actually getting the application done, personal statements and all that? Okay, so our uni really, like, I mean, not my uni, my school, <laughs> took it really serious. They're like, yeah, we're going to have one designated head of, of like, the sixth form center that's going to help you guys uh, with your UCAS application and things. And they had like such a strict system. They're like, okay, people who are internationals who are not going to UK, people are gonna be in the UK and people who are gonna stay in the Middle East. And they kind of separated it oh, like that. Cool. Yeah, and then I, they helped me with my UCAS application. We kind of had like a few workshops on how to actually open up UCAS and work on it and start it. I think every single person in my year group was going to uni except for one person, so we were all like mandatory attendants for them. And it was it was very useful, honestly. I did, like, yes, it got a bit hectic sometimes. It was really annoying, but <laughs> it was, we did it at the end of the day. <laughs> we applied, and we got to obviously ask our teachers for any advice if they had uni suggestions, if, they, if we needed help with the applications. And with personal statements as well, um, I found that asking the people around me to double check my spellings and things like that, my grammar. It was really, really useful. And my head of school even took the opera. He was like, guys, you know what? I'm free. Send me your UCAS <laughs> application. Send me the personal statement. Oh. And I was like, wait, that's really sweet of him. And that really helped as well. Yeah, definitely. With the, with the confidence as well for all of us, yeah. Like having that support. Yeah. That's really nice. Love it. Yeah, we, we had something similar, actually. Like we had, um, we had this one person who was like just on personal statements. We had like the UCAS days of we had a whole day of like how to write CV, how to revise, and how to get everything ready for uni. Um, like Unifrog, if that's what it's called. Oh my god, yeah. yes, Unifrog. <laughs> it's like a platform. So yeah, like yeah. we all got to use. And um, yeah, the like personal statement thing, we, was, we sent it in to one of the teachers and she would like mark it, highlight the like, bits that are wrong. She's like, add a bit more of this. Like, mm. this is personal, this is good, a bit more of this. And like a couple of people who weren't going to uni, they were like, oh, I don't want to be doing this. Because, mm. like, like, you know, like you said, we're in the UK, a lot of people like it's very half and half. Don't go, and they do go. Yeah. But yeah, it was really. We, we actually had quite a lot of help when it comes to like applying for uni. Like I said, I spoke to a couple of teachers, even being like, "Oh, what, where did you go? How did you get into where you're going?" Mm -hmm. And they were very open. Oh, I did this, I did that. And I think getting their like personal experience was so helpful as well. Because like, well, they've made it. You know, they've completed. They've graduated. They've got a job after. Because for me, that was my biggest like fear of like, oh, if I go to uni, am I going to get a job after? And then be like being here for like oh, there are so many people, like, they're in this, they're in that. Like, they bring the graduates in, you're like, okay, they can make it, you know. You can get there in the world. And, yeah, like, speaking to teachers, like you said, like, the grammar checks, all of it, so helpful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love that. And I, 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 we've spoken about this as well. Like, the idea of people saying that, what am I going to get out of it? Is it worth it? Mm. You might not even, like, you might do your whole course. You might think, you know what? I'm going this direction. Yeah. 
because I've learned so many transferable skills over here, and that's great. That's what uni is about. It's like you get tools in your arsenal so you can be a multi-skilled like worker, whether you go into work in media or an actor, or you, go, you can go into production. So you, yeah. you now know the opposite side of being in front of the camera while knowing what's behind, what's behind the camera. So it's always good. But, and I think it's really, really great like that schools all over the world are really helping students actually do that. Love that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm really inter interested because halls are like such a touchy subject with a lot of people. And just moving away from her home in general is obviously really, really hard. You kind of battle homesickness and you battle anxiety and you're trying to figure out how to do laundry and clean and how to <laughs> ca care for yourself and give yourself medicine. What was your first day? You've m kind of mentioned like seeing Phoebe and Chloe. Yeah. But what was like your first week in halls like? I would love to know. Who wants to go first? Um, ours was very like... Everyone was like, what do we do? Do we, like, has anyone town centre <laughs> yet? Do we talk to each other? Yeah, <laughs> like, I, when I first moved in, I texted the girl I live next door with, and I was like, are you done moving your stuff in? She's like, in 10 minutes. And then we're like, should we go to the kitchen? And we're like, yeah, we both walked to the kitchen. And then it was very, like, I, I asked people who went to uni before, and I was like, is it like the films? Do you sit down, and you sit there, and you do, like, one breath, and you're like, oh, my own. And, it, like, personally, I thought it was. I sat there and was like, oh. My mum's gone, my sister's gone. I'm like, oh, <laughs> what do I do with myself? It's like, you know, those, those TikToks of like, um, again, I might be talking in TikTok like brain rot terms here. You know, those like TikToks of like the, the, the lonely rat like eating in yeah. the kitchen? <laughs> Literally. Like, did you, is that what you thought it was going to be like? I thought it was going to be like that, but then, uh, yeah, everyone, like the first three weeks, like cause everyone wants to know each other, everyone wants to get to know each other. Everyone was in the kitchen. All of us sat there cooking together. And we're like, okay, so who's gone to town? Like, my first. Like actual like day of uni, like the introduction week, mm -hmm. we had a group like a group of like ten of us, and I was leading them through like I Apple was Maps, le leading them to here, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> marching. I was like, right guys, next, left, yep. <laughs> it was so funny because all of us had no idea, but yeah. again, we're all in the same boat. We yeah. all just followed each other, and then, you know, and now it's just like nothing now. You just you walk to uni, you're like, you're yeah, home. yeah, yeah, and it's like yeah, I got used to it very quickly, which was actually quite surprising. I had I had a rough moment a couple of times. My first like few weeks, I was sat there like to my mum. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm doing. And she's like, It's fine. You got this. And I was like, Yeah, she's right. So she is. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you, Leanne? Um, first week in halls were pretty nice. Um, I didn't. Yeah, it was mainly Chloe and Phoebe that I, would, I was with. We would, they would either message me or I'd sit in the kitchen. My dad was still with me in those, like, two days, so he was getting along with them. Oh. I think he would take a smoke break with Chloe and they would go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be preparing my meal and they're, like, having a chat. But it was it was What nice. a cool dad. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And no, then can, I, can I just preface that? Smoking is not cool. Do not smoke. <laughs> I agree, by the way. <laughs> Fully agree. Never From do it. From a previous it. smoker, do not smoke. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, the first week, it was pretty calm. I was getting along with my flatmates. We didn't do big extravagant parties or anything. We just sat in the kitchen and talked, made meals. Um, and cute. then we got even closer as time went on, yeah. Wholesome, very, very, very wholesome. Yeah. Because like Jordan, you're, we've discussed this, you're not a whole student, yeah. but then you've also said that like, yeah, you're, you're fine because you got those experiences as well. Yeah. So I think it's just I think it's all about being open and like just mm -hmm. having conversations. And it's so funny that like you mentioned the idea of like there is a group of you kind of just moving together <laughs> <Yeah>. as like <laughs> a unit because that's pretty much how it is until mm, you figure yeah. out okay this is there this is that I know I can go to this place to get this thing yeah. or this restaurant is really really good and like um, I love that. What was your first uh, like um, impression of like l the halls when you first like got there? Were you like oh? This is tiny compared to my house. Because if you think about it in like layman's terms, you go from living in a house or like a flat with your family, yeah. and you're now confined to a room mm. and a, a cupboard in the kitchen. And how have you adjusted like the idea of like having space, like having your own personal space? Yeah, I loved when I, when I walked to my room and I decorated. I was like, I love this. You know, I'm on my own. Because like back home, I shared a room with my sister and like loved it. Like me and my sister are close. But like when you got your own space, you're like, actually, do you know what? Yeah, I can do. I can put this here. I can do that there. Like, all of it. I think obviously sharing the kitchen with people was the first thing everyone's like, oh. Oh. But no, it's not. It's not bad. Like, it's, it's, you know, you talk to people. You're like, oh, can you put this away? Done. Have you got? Have you got a clean flat? At times, if it's, it depends <laughs> who's there. It's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, nothing's always clean all the time. You know, but when you live with like 
depends on how many people you live with, five to nine people, you know, it's not always going to be like pristine. Yeah. But that's fine because, again, we're all just, it's a communal area. So we always say to each other, it's a communal area. Mm. It's not going to be perfect, perfect all the time because everyone's got different standards of clean. Um, and they, everyone has different times and whatnot. Yeah. So. Exactly, because I work, so I was saying to like people who are like off on weekends, they can they can do everything they want. They can clean, they can do their washing. Whereas for me, it's like I'll wash my stuff up and do that, and then I'll like put the bins out last when it, like because obviously I'm not there during the weekend day. So in the night, that's when I get everything done. But it, it is doable. You know, you can you can get that job. You can still socialize as well as getting everything sorted. So. So you have a part time job. Yeah. Love that. What about you? What What, what was it like <laughs> going from like a, a house? So a tiny room in a different country. Oh, it was okay. I kind of I knew what I was expecting. I knew I was gonna come to a small room and live in a flat on my own. I think coming in first. I don't know why, but I was like, wait. Were you we the first person in the flat? I think I was the third person. They were all in the rooms though. Uh-huh. Uh, I came a bit late because I came directly from the airport, um, from London Airport Heathrow. So I had to take the train and everything. And I got there and I looked at the room and it's empty and it's just a bed and the. Table. I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. It's it's very dull. There isn't much life here. No personality. And yeah, I was kind of like, I don't know how, what to expect. But I wasn't feeling very excited about it. Even I, I looked at my dad. My dad could read my mind. I could tell. He was like, it's okay. I was like, yeah, it's okay. But then I think the moment I decorated it, he helped me unpack. Um, I started putting pictures up on my little board thingy, the pin board. I was like, this. It really does feel like home. And I had quite a spacious bedroom, which I realized compared to the other flats um, and different accommodations. So I think that's another aspect I really like because I do value my own personal space and like my privacy. I need that, like every night I need to sit down for a good hour with my tea on my bed and the fairy lights on before I can sleep properly. So having that environment really does help and I, I do like it now, yeah. Love that. So you're, you're in, where, which holes are you guys in? So I'm in Pitville. I'm in Upper yeah. Keys. So you're in Cheltenham and Gloucester? Yeah. yeah. Love that. Um, I was, again, I need to unlock my phone. <laughs> feel free. Um, you kind of just mentioned it, but what was the moment for both of you when you did kind of feel at home here? Yeah, for me, I think oh, it what was. a wholesome question. I know. <laughs> I love it, yeah. Um, well, obviously, I felt like it. I think kind of when my dad left, honestly. He left on the third day. And then that Did was. Did he cry when he left? Oh my god, I sobbed. It was so. <laughs> he, he Did he cry? No, but he. <laughs> he was crying on the plane, I can tell you yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this man, <laughs> this man went around Europe on a motorcycle trip after he dropped me off. <laughs> that sounds so cool. It yeah. was really cool. Your dad sounds so cool. Yeah, <laughs> he is. I love him. My, oh, my hero. Sorry, um, we're digressing. Yeah. 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 When did you feel like home? But, um,. I think, yeah, when he left and I finally went through my first day alone, walking to uni, everything, I kind of sat back in my bedroom. I was like, wait, this, this is my new home. And I just, I felt really at peace, I think, yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, I think the moment it felt at home for me was, I think just, it sounds like just when you walk around, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do this today. I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go to the shop. I'm gonna go do like the basic things. And it was kind of like, as well, having someone come over. So when, I'm, when my boyfriend came over, I was like, this is, this is my place now, I get to show you around. <laughs> I was like, this is, <laughs> This is my like home now, like you know, it's just it's, as well. It sounds silly, but like the first time you said you're like your mom, like oh, I'm going back home now to like your accommodation. It is like the moment you realise you're like oh. The one you actually call it a home. Yeah, I think that's the main thing for me. Being able to say to someone, I'm going home now. See you later, yeah. and you go back to your accommodation instead of thinking, oh, I, I'm going to go back home, meaning going to f- like travel back. But when yeah. you go back home, and I think, really, did you go over, go back to Bahrain over Christmas? Yeah, I did. And when you go back to Oxford, do you guys ever like feel like, oh, I can't wait to go back? Did you have that? Or yeah. you just have to leave Bahrain? <laughs> kind of, that's the thing. No, it's fair it enough was, though. I stayed for, I think, three weeks in Bahrain. Yeah, three weeks in Bahrain. And I think towards the third week, I was like, I, like, I don't want to leave home. I, I love so nice the sun was out <laughs> good times yeah. i was like i have to come back here but at the same time i really want to see my friends i want to get back in the course i love acting that's why i left the country at the end of the day so it was it was kind of a mix of both yeah i want to leave but i didn't want to leave what about you harriet do you ever yeah, like, when you go when you go back home do you want to come back straight away oh, it's mixed opinions like when i'm there i'm like oh i'm back with people i want to be with like oh, but then i'm sort of like oh but i do miss having my own space mm-hmm. that's my main thing with uni it's like i love the independence so see, when I go back home, it's like, oh, mum, do you mind just quickly, can we go here? Like, oh, do you mind if I, all this yeah. and that? Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah very, un, like, un, not controlled. But again, it's your, like, your family. So you're like, 
oh, I have to take my brother here now. It's like the first thing I have to go back when I go back next time is, oh, and my brother's went, we're going to Nando's by the way. Oh, OK, <laughs> never mind then. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do what you want to do. Um, <laughs> But no, yeah, it literally, I think independence is the main thing I miss. When I'm back home, I'm like, yeah, I just can't, I miss like, oh, I'm, I can just go, I don't have to tell anyone. I'm your just space, like, you miss yeah. your, you miss your home. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love that. And I'm, I'm just conscious of time, so I kind of want to wrap up with a few kind of, I'm going to call them rapid fire questions, mm -hmm. but don't feel like I have to give like really quick answers. But essentially, you guys were in a very different space this time last year. Like you might not have been to think about university or anything, but what would your advice be to someone who's thinking about maybe like leaving home then going to uni to kind of like f feel like figure out their ambition? What would your advice be to that person? I'd say it's definitely worth the risk. It, it, it's scary, but uh, you get over it. Like it is worth it, hundred percent. All them like anxieties and nerves you have before, but as soon as you get here, as if it's the right place, you know it. Love yeah. that. And Leanne, what yeah. about you? What would your advice be to like an international student to? is worried generally about like, moving continents, let alone moving countries. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't, if you always stay in that shell, you will never experience what's outside of it. And yes, it is, it is scary at first and having to leave the country and yeah. travel abroad, but do it once and it will be so easy next time. And then you won't feel anxious next time you yeah. do it. Yeah, so I would highly recommend. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Yeah. I love that the TV is now going to turn off. Soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, go home. Like, like, come on, guys, let's wrap yeah. it up. Um, <laughs> and I'm also really conscious to also hear your own piece of advice that you would give your younger self. Oh, oh my God. Like, yeah. like, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, deep. Yeah, like lung, deep. young mm. Leanne, lung, yeah. uh, young Harriet, nervous about going to uni, doesn't want to go to uni. What would your advice be? And then you can ask a question as well. Yeah. Ask that was mine. Oh, great. <laughs> We're so in sync. I know. <laughs> I think for me, it's, it will be OK. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I won't feel as homesick. That's what I want to tell myself. <laughs> Like, I think I, was, I had this really big mindset that, oh, when I'm going, I'm going to feel homesick. My siblings felt homesick. My sister felt that. Well, I'm going to feel it as well. I didn't feel that much homesick, honestly. I feel like this is my home as well. At the end of the day, both places are. So don't stress about that factor. And continue with this positive mindset, I think, because every time something bad happens, I kind of like to switch it around. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're all humans at the end of the day. You said that, right? So <laughs> obviously, we'll have bad days, but also yeah. think positively, like, yeah, but... I'm cool. Yeah, maybe I'm having yeah, a bad day. I'm cool, you know. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Just look in the mirror and like positive. Like, positive yeah, I'm doing this today. Yeah, maybe yeah. maybe I burnt the food, but usually I don't burn the food, <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> Everyone has bad days. Everyone has yeah. bad days, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll definitely just tell my younger self that like it just gets easier. You know, you you can make it like at, like sitting there young in school thinking oh, I'm not gonna like finish school. It's just like you can do it. You mm -hmm. just have to just push through. It's just the little things like that, just knowing that there is like, you know, like light at the end of the tunnel type of thing. There is a way to like get to where you want. And that's why just, just do it. Like just stay focused and positive and you'll get there. Yeah. Love that. Um, I mean, before we wrap up, we do this thing where we ask you guys three questions. Do you want to ask the questions? Okay. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Do okay. you remember them? <laughs> I remember one I, of them. <laughs> I always forget them, guys. It's not, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> so I should get them like written on my hand. <laughs> If you start with one, that will probably will jig my mind. Yeah, memory. I think you know the one I remember okay. as well. Yeah. Go. <laughs> what's your best student meal? Yes. That you made? Or more likely, what's your worst student meal? <laughs> End of the month, cupboard yeah. is empty, yeah. you're being creative. Nothing left. Mine was hash browns, beans, a big squirt of mayo. Mm. <laughs> lost me there, stunning. but okay, yeah. yeah. Stunning. And just hoping for the best with it, really. Hash browns and beans is good. Yeah. yeah. I like that. I mean, with the. Mayo. The mayo is rogue. As, yeah. Yeah, why is it there? I don't know. <laughs> is that salt and pepper than anything else? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Wasn't literally. that with a glass of milk? Yeah, well? and a, that's and a where big, you go wrong. Like pint of like whole milk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <I should> quite <laughs> Excuse me. So wait, let, let me just like think about this. Let's go back to you in the kitchen. Harriet, young girl, just like, oh, I'm gonna make. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get hash browns out of the freezer, a tin of beans, I'm gonna eat the beans up. I just want some mayo because I want that like yeah. and I want Never a nice refreshing in. glass of milk. Yeah. Why? Do you like milk? Do you Love drink milk? milk? Okay. Yeah. Is that a common occurrence? Oh my flatmates milk. used to make fun of me at the start, like not make fun, but they used to laugh because I'd be like, sorry, I'm gonna need to go get more milk and they're like, You've already finished it. I'm like, Yeah, but Do you warm it up? Do you put like sugar in it? No, I literally just cold milk. 
But I met someone in the first week of being there that also did it. So we both sat there with our pint of milk and we were like, yes, <laughs> I'm <of> not alone. <laughs> Because yeah. I remember, like, when I was a kid, I loved, like, a warm glass of milk or sugar before bed. Mm. Like, that is great. So I guess, like, that's nostalgic. Yeah. Was it, is that something that you did as a kid? Like I used to, like, <laughs> my mum used to hate, I was that kid that drank out of the actual, like, carton. <laughs> she hated it. She was like, put it down. Yeah. <laughs> but always. Perhaps. Yeah. So, okay, beans, hash browns, mayo <laughs> and milk. <laughs> okay, that is not as bad, but Oh, we and a bit of broccoli, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah I had broccoli. broccoli. You know, oh, five a day. Need, need, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love that. Make it a little bit healthy as well. Perhaps. What about you? Yeah, it's so funny. I'm not gonna lie. I actually cook. <laughs> like, like, she's like, I cook. Thank no, you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, because the thing is, if I eat, like, if I'm ever, I need a snack or something, I just eat the leftovers of what I cook. I just cook big portions so it lasts me. But I guess my favorite thing to cook is my uh, coconut chickpea curry. So Ooh. good. Yum. Love yeah, that. Love it. We love it. We love it. <laughs> so no glass of milk. Now no I'm embarrassed. <laughs> Just my, you know, seven cups of tea a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's how how do you have your tea? That's really, I think that's a really important question. Well, it depends. If it's green tea or chamomile, it's plain with no sugar, just straight tea. Yeah. Um, if it's red tea, it has to have sugar in it. And milk? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's good with milk. Love that. It just depends how I feel. Love that. How do you have your tea? Just milk, Like the most basic, like, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I didn't put a lot of milk in it, actually. Oh, wow. I put, like, two sugars, a little bit of milk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last bit left just the cat. Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. love that. <laughs> and then what would you, in, like, what would you, what's on your bucket list in general? It could be mm -hmm. academic, it could be fun things to do. I want to go to Paris with the girls. That's the mo that's the first thing on our list, is, like, we also want to, like, get a bit of journalism into it as well and be, like, this is our day in life in Paris, mm. you Love know? That. Yeah. 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 You should and definitely do that. Yeah, I'm also planning to, um, like, interview people in, like, our, our hometowns, because obviously if all six are from different places, we're like, I'm here in Oxford, and then my friends will be like, I'm here in Devon, and, you Love know. That. Just, like, add a little bit of fun and journalism into our, like, daily lives. But, yeah. That's the fun. things. Very ambitious. I love it. Okay. Um, so I have my friend Bella and Grace. We actually have an F1 podcast together. So our goal or our bucket list is to go to at least one Grand Prix every single year. Just, love that. just like love together. That. And we, they already did one this year. It was in Bahrain. Bella's first time in the Middle East and she loved it. Um, so taking one off. I love that. That's, so, that's, that's really, really cool. And we'll link uh, Leanne's podcast in the description. I love it. <laughs> Get the promo. And then finally, before we wrap up um, and say our goodbyes, if you could sum up, because well, are you halfway through the year now? How long have we got? Yeah, we've got, 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 got yeah. two months left. Uh, yeah. Almost done, okay. Mm. So you are now like seasoned first year students. How would you sum up your experience so far in a word or a phrase? Rah! <laughs> 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 Best way to describe it. <laughs> like, whoa. I was going to say confusing, but that works too. Yeah. <laughs> in a good way? In a, a good way, way. I love yeah. it. It's like, you never know what to expect and it's yeah. in such a fun way mm. like life throws curveballs at you but they're entertaining yeah, yeah. i love that would yeah. you relate <laughs> yeah 100 percent. like you, you just get you get like dive into things and it's like wow what am i doing right now but yeah, yeah in like such a good way mm -hmm. like it's just everything all at once but you know, yeah. it's, it's good because you've always got something to do. Adds to the plot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Adds to the plot. <laughs> yeah. It expands your lore further. I love exactly. that. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you for trekking all the way. We're not trekking, but coming all the way from Gloucester to here. <laughs> love uh, it. Thank you for walking down the road. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we really love having you. And I'm sure we'll have you again soon. Um, Peanut Gallery, can you please remind me which one is my camera? Just trying to be a professional. Thank you, guys. Love you. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching the Behind the New podcast. My name is Hisham. I'm Jordan. And this has been a podcast brought to you by the University of Gloucestershire, focused on everything students from outside of lectures, from finance to talking about eating beans with milk <laughs> to <laughs> overcoming your fears of leaving the country. But if you're interested in studying at the University of Gloucestershire, head to the link in the description if you're on YouTube or if you're listening on uh, any podcasting platform like Spotify or Apple Podcasts, head to at Uni of Gloucester on Instagram or gloucestersac.uk for all the info you need. And uh, make sure to tune in next week. We have a fresh episode for you every week. And if you're, if you're already bored and you can't wait until next week, go back and listen to all of your other ones. You have a whole other yeah. season that you can listen to and explore. But thank you guys so much. We do this thing where we pretend like we're in like a children's TV show at the end and like wave to the camera. <laughs> I think it's that camera over there. Uh, <laughs> camera two, that one. I know my numbers. <laughs> uh, so on three, we'll count to three and we'll say goodbye together, okay? One, yeah. two, three.
Bye. Bye.